In a moment, the final interviews with the leaders, but first, Kerry Ritchie looks at the highlights of Campaign 2010. Election campaigns, a time of tried and true picture opportunities, when politicians turn tradesmen. Teach me how to do some bricklaying. Uh, I'll try. Or vegetable man. Yes, no. no I reckon no. Even sportsman. It travels better up here, doesn't it, in the thinner air? <laughs> it's all about connecting with the common man. John Brumby kept stressing that winning a record fourth term wouldn't be a breeze. I'm under no illusions that the election will be a tough election. The Premier brought out the big guns for his campaign launch. A Labor government whose best days are in front of it. But afterwards, some questioned whether the don't look back, look forward message was smart thinking. Ted Bailey has been telling anyone who will listen that Labor has crashed and burned on issues like public transport. One more try. But the opposition leader's been knocked by some commentators for not performing with enough passion to be Premier. And some members of his team have been accused of going missing in action. You're the alternative treasurer. You don't seem to have much of a profile. We have a staff of three the dual of our election promises. That's how we want it. The Premier said he wanted this to be a positive campaign. He just forgot to tell his education minister. I have a very, very strong positive agenda. Bronwyn Pike attacked her rival in the seat of Melbourne, Greens candidate Brian Walters, for acting as a lawyer for a mining company and an accused Nazi war criminal. This is about scrutiny. Um, it is about people uh, being asked legitimate questions. In the final week, the campaign got even nastier. Ted Bailey announced he was suing Labor for defamation over this TV ad. The same company got the contract to sell 27 properties without even going to tender. The Attorney-General ignored the positive campaign directive and told a rattled Ted Bailey that he needed to toughen up. Whenever he's uh, scrutinised, uh, you can almost see him pull out the hanky and uh, almost start crying, you know. There were some very ordinary performances this campaign. The Treasurer and the Finance Minister teamed up to announce stamp duty cuts. The changes benefited only 4,000 people in all of Victoria. But did this duo want anyone to know that? How many Victorians will benefit from your stamp duty tax cut in each of the next four years? Well, if you're talking of how many Victorians will benefit, every Victorian will benefit. Directly. Be, directly. Well, no, you asked Treasurer, me, no, you, you ask asked no, me, Paul, how no, many Victorians will benefit. I'm answering your questions. I'm delighted, to be, I'm delighted to be here with Tim Holder in answering your questions today. You've got to figure it out. It's been possible for you not yeah, to know well, how many. I am addressing the answer and you are asking me questions you're not asking Mr Wells and what you will find when we, 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 well, it went on and on you able to you, say the number, Treasurer? this is very interesting and it shows the importance of scrutiny is the finance minister able to give us the answer the treasurer hasn't given us your the colleague has given the answer I'm not going to play the game you are seeking to play I've given you every bit of information Why won't so it's you around say what it is? well it's uh, it's, the number fluctuates by, by, by a fair amount. From between hear, what to what? But from about four to, to four and to... Paul, this is exactly on, sorry, why, sorry, this sorry, is exactly sorry, why sorry, they go sorry, in... Sorry, that is exactly Mr. why Mr. they go in... Between what to what? Uh, well, we've, 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 we've heard the assumption. Don't, don't, don't look needlessly cute about it. Later, their boss showed them how easy it is to just be honest. The number will be around 4,000 a year. Coming thick and fast through all of this drama were the policies. Labor's vision to send Year 9 students to boot camp to learn respect. The Coalition's plan to extend prison sentences for murderers and drug traffickers. For this campaign, the serious stuff got overshadowed by the nonsense and the name-calling. And Labor was the main culprit. This is just well, absolute no, scurrilous. Just, scurrilous is no. attacking the professionalism of Treasury. He's no, no, attacking no, individual I'm attacking people. your professionalism. Atta- well, Luckily for the press pack, there were those golden moments that no media manager can control. Bailey. 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 Yeah, Bailey. Bailey with a U on the end. Bailey. Bailey. All right. Well, Easy, guys. Right. Operation Guardian, Mr Molino. What's the state with that? Operationally, I, I can't comment on those details. Do you know what it is? Um, yes, I do. What? Well, this is around um, uh, racial violence and improving um, uh, a focus on, um, on uh, violent behaviour in those areas. What areas? Operation Guardian's based on the public transport. 
That's right. And there was this blast from the past. The two combatants were once classmates who enjoyed playing up to the cameras. It's clear they still do. The former Melbourne grammar boys will soon know which one of them gets to be state captain. 